The seventh season of Game of Thrones was the shortest season of the series up to this point. While all the other seasons followed a 10 episode format, this season went down to 7, but with some of the runtimes going a bit longer. The storylines were far smaller than usual. It was really just Jon Snow in the north preparing for the White Walker invasion while trying to convince Daenerys to put aside her war with Cersei and join the war for the living. Well of course some more things went down, so let me get into the details. Arya took care of Walder Frey in the season 6 finale, but in this season's premiere she made sure that no other Frey would sit on his seat by wiping out the family with poison before she heads for King's Landing where Cersei is. Sam discovered from a book in the Citadel that there is an abundant amount of dragon glass within the volcano on Dragonstone, where it just so happens that Daenerys is chilling with her allies. Sam also discovers Jorah Mormont in the Citadel looking for a cure for his grayscale. This contagious infection was always believed to be incurable unless you're a child, like Stannis' daughter Shireen. Cersei, lacking any allies, agrees to join forces with Euron Greyjoy. He wants marriage in exchange for his fleet, but she wants him to prove his loyalty first before agreeing to anything like that, so he promises to bring her a gift. The gift he returns to Cersei was his niece Yara, along with defeated Dornishmen. Two of Oberyn's daughters were killed in the sea battle, with one captured and Theon the coward swam away to save himself. As revenge for killing Marcella with poison, Cersei kills one of the sand snakes in the same way as her mother watches. Cersei agrees to marry Euron after all the fighting is over. Sam performs a dangerous procedure that magically cures Jorah, so he's now free to serve Daenerys again. Hot Pie informs Arya that Jon is now the king in the north, so she decides to return home instead of assassinating Cersei. In the Riverlands, while on her way home, she runs into her bonded direwolf Nymeria and her large pack of wolves. Nymeria refuses to return home, but it was still a nice little moment in the show. Jon meets with Daenerys, but things don't go smoothly. She allows him to mine for dragonglass, but is still focused on conquering the Seven Kingdoms, including the North, which Jon wouldn't give up. Taking Tyrion's advice, Daenerys commands her unsullied army to attack the Lannisters' home of Casterly Rock, which they found mostly unguarded. Their men were busy taking Highgarden from House Tyrell, which ends in Olenna agreeing to drink some poison handed to her by Jaime. Will there be pain? No, I made sure of that. That's good. Bran returns home to Winterfell, which is only being looked over by Sansa. Arya would be the next Stark to return home in the very next episode. Littlefinger, who is still creeping around in their home, gifts Bran with the Valyrian steel dagger that was used in his failed assassination all the way back in season 1. Bran is officially the new Thread Raven now, who has no use for weapons, so gives a valuable dagger to Arya. After the Lannister victory in the Reach, Daenerys decides to retaliate with Dragonfire and her Dothraki fighters. Even with a scorpion bolt piercing Drogon, Daenerys' forces dominate. Jaime recklessly charges at the dragon, but is saved by Bronn and both are able to escape back to King's Landing. Davos smuggles Tyrion into King's Landing to speak with Jaime about having a temporary peace treaty. In order to convince Cersei that the Night King and his dead army is the real threat, Jon and a small group decide to go beyond the wall and capture a white to prove their claims and pause their war. Davos finds Gendry in King's Landing, who hasn't been seen in a few seasons and they all return to Dragonstone together. Cersei drops a huge revelation in this same episode. She reveals to Jaime that she is pregnant with his child. But with how evil and manipulative she is, who knows if she's telling the truth? Almost the entirety of the sixth episode was focused on the range beyond the wall, which rightfully deserved the attention. Jon and company got their white, but at the cost of some of their men and Daenerys' dragon, Viserion. Jon asks Gendry to send a raven for backup, and while Daenerys saves the group, she loses a vital weapon. Just when you think Jon is done for, he is saved by his undead uncle Benjen, who stays behind long enough for Jon to get away. After his rescue, Jon puts aside his pride and pleads fealty to Daenerys, and at the end of the episode, the Night King resurrects Viserion, bringing him into his own army. All the work it took to get to White looks like it might have been in vain. Cersei pretends to agree to peace terms, but secretly tasks Euron Greyjoy with hiring the Golden Company, who are sellswords from Essos to join her army. Jaime finally has enough of his twin's antics and leaves her side, so it looks like he'll be joining the war against the Night King. We get confirmation that Rhaegar and Lyanna were in fact in love and married before having Jon, when Sam makes his way to Winterfell and chats with Bran. Jon sleeps with Daenerys in this finale, which a lot of fans got a laugh from since he hasn't been informed that she's his aunt, but there have been weirder relationships in this series. It seems like Theon is about to set off on a redemption arc, since he's off to save his sister from Euron, which will take place in the final season. One of the worst plots in Game of Thrones is this whole Littlefinger, Sansa, Arya tension in Winterfell. 
I feel like Littlefinger's character deserved a lot more than his abrupt death at the hands of Arya. It really felt like the writers didn't know what to do with his character and just got rid of him so they can focus on the finale. But also in the seventh episode came one of the most important moments of the story. At the very last scene of the season, the Night King atop of Zombie Viserion is able to destroy the wall, which was the only thing stopping the Dead Army from ravaging the Seven Kingdoms, since it was built with the Children of the Forest's magic. The massive army is now steadily approaching the Seven Kingdoms. Thanks for watching guys.